Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we're gonna be continuing our comparison between .NET and Node.js. We're gonna be going through step by step of how we can actually add database to our web APIs from a .NET side and from a Node.js side and we're gonna be seeing how do they differ and how, what are the similarities between the two. So let's get started. So what I have here is the application that we have created last time which we can see our basic very simple web APIs from both .NET as well as Node.js. In today's video we're gonna be seeing how we can actually add a SQLite database to this. So the first the thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install a package. We're gonna start first by the Node.js application and by installing the packages for it. So I'm gonna open my terminal and inside my terminal here, I'm gonna make it just a bit bigger and I'm gonna put npm install SQLite3. And we can see now it has been installed successfully. Okay, great. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna close this inside my explorer window i'm gonna add first two new files the first one is gonna be called users.db and this is gonna be my database that i'm gonna be referring to and another file is gonna be db.js and this is where i'm gonna be managing my database through node.js so once i have done this what i want to do is i want to refer to the package that i have just installed which is gonna be const i'm gonna call it sqlite equal require and i'm gonna refer to sqlite3 and then i'm gonna say it's gonna be verbose perfect so once i have done that now what i want to do is I want to open a connection between my web API and my database in order for me to utilize it. So I'm going to put var db equal new sqlite.database and I'm going to say it's going to be called users.db users.db and then I'm going to specify the read write so sqlite.openreadwrite and then if there is any types of error I want to handle it right here so I'm going to say if error and what I want to do right now is I'm going to say if oops if error print or console.log something went wrong perfect so now that i have this now what i want to do is i want to create my query that i'm going to be utilizing to create my table and i'm going to put var sql equal and i'm going to utilize double quotation it's the back for back tick and i'm going to put create table users and we're going to specify the id as an integer and it's going to be the primary key and then we're going to specify my first name last name as well as email okay perfect so now that i have this i have my database connection i have my command here all i'm going to do finally is i'm going to put db.run and i'm going to pass my sql great so now that i have this what i want to do is i'm going to open my terminal again and inside my terminal here i'm just gonna put node.db.js and now we can see it runs successfully so now if i open my let's go back here if i open my users db and i click on open anyway and i'm going to utilize my sqlite viewer we should be able to see i have my users table let's make this a bit bigger so we can see i have my users table and inside my users tables we have the div we have the id first name last name and email and as you can see from the id it's a primary okay perfect so that's the way i was able to create a database inside my node.js application and connect to it so we can see it's pretty straightforward enough so let's see how we can do the same thing within our .NET application so now what i'm going to do i'm going to open my terminal here i also need to install some packages so i'm going to put .NET add package microsoft .entity framework core design so i need to navigate to the right directory as always then i'm gonna run the same query again okay perfect now it has installed successfully the second package that i want is sqlite okay perfect so both have been installed successfully so i'm gonna double check these through my cs pros and if i take a look at them we can see that i have them both available so i have my design here available and my sqlite and they are running on the latest version which is 8.0.3 Okay, perfect. So now that I have this in place, what I want to do right now inside my file here is I want to actually create my table or the structure of my table. So I'm going to put a class, user, and then you're going to have also an ID. So an integer ID, I'm going to put string, which is going to be for my first name. And let's just copy this two times. I'm going to close this. So first name and last name and email address. Okay, great. So now that I have my user class here, what I want to do next is I want to create my application to be content text and in order for me to do that i'm gonna put public actually i'm just gonna put i'm gonna put the class api db context it's gonna inherit from the db context class and let's refer to it so i'm gonna put here using microsoft dot entity framework core and what i want to do here right now is i want to define my table so we're gonna put public db set user i'm gonna call it users i'm gonna put the getter and the setter and then what i want to do is i want to specify my constructor and it's going to be for the api db contact it's going to take db contacts options for the api db contacts and it's going to be options and i'm going to pass this to the base class 
Okay, great. So now that I have done this, first of all, let's just make sure everything is running or there's no errors. I'm just gonna put dot .NET build. Actually, let's navigate to the right. So I'm just gonna put dot .NET build and we can see everything is building successfully. I got the build succeeded. Okay, great. So now that I have done this, what I wanna do right now is I'm gonna come here inside my app settings.json and I'm gonna add my connection string and I'm gonna call this default connection and I'm gonna call this, let's close this so it's more visible. It's gonna be data source app.db. Okay, perfect. So now I have done almost all of the heavy lifting in order for me to create my application. Sorry, my, my database connection. I have specified my connection string. I have specified my DB context. I specified my table structure. Now what I want to do here is I want to actually connect my application because if we if you're aware how the dot .NET work is basically everything is going to run through a middleware. So everything's going to go through some kind of a pipeline. And in order for my web application to understand that there's going to be a dependence on a database, what I need to do is I need to tell the pipeline that there's going to be a database connection that, that it needs to take into consideration and that's why I need to inject it here. So first of all I need to get my connection string so I'm going to put for connection equal builder dot configuration it's going to be connection strings and I think it's default connection so let's just copy paste it and let me just copy paste this one as well just to avoid any unnecessary typos errors. Okay great. So now that I have got my connection string, what I want to do is I want to take this connection string and inject it into the builder. So I'm going to put builder dot dot services dot add DB context and I'm going to tell it that it needs to refer to the API DB context. So let's copy this and then I need to specify the options of how I want to actually configure this and the options are going to be options dot use SQLite and I'm going to pass my connection string here. Okay, perfect. So now that I have this in place, now that my application understands everything that my application DB context, and now I was able to integrate it, let's put this on a new line so we are able to see it better. So build this dot services, uh, so also put this on a new line. So we can see this is my connection string, and we can see this is um, how I'm telling my web API that it needs to connect to SQLite. So I'm just going to do dot .NET build again. Also, everything built successfully. So now if we take a look here, as you can see, I don't have my database created. What I need to do is I need to tell .NET to create it for me. And the way that I'm doing this, this is called code first approach and .NET has a built-in implementation for code first approach where basically it is responsible for keeping track of the database update versioning. We can refer it back. On the other side within Node, I don't have that. I need to do that all of that manually. So let me see how we can actually create this database. So first of all, I need to create a migration. So I'm going to put .NET EF migrations add. And then what I want to do is I'm going to specify this migration name. I'm going to call it initial migration and I'm going to run enter. So now we can see building has started. Let's make this a bit bigger. And then we can see that it has done successfully. And then the last step is I'm going to put .NET EF database update. And when I do this, it's going to actually create my database and apply it. So now that it runs successfully, if I go here to the left hand side, I can see now I have my app DB open SQL viewer we can see I have the same structure let's make this a bit bigger so we can see it all and if I go to tables we can see here that I have my users which has the same structure I have a SQL light sequence and I have EF migration so the EF migration here that I see it's a way that entity framework utilizes in order for it to keep the version of the database so if I need to revert an older version it will use this one the users table is the one that I created and this is the SQL sequencer that has been automatically created as well but what I'm interested in here we can see that my app DB has the same structure perfect so now that I have this, or we can see here that I must stop email name. So let's see how we see how we can uh, update this. So what I want to do here, if I go down to my class, I'm just going to remove name. And the way that I update this is I'm going to put, that's a very interesting scenario. So I'm going to put dot .NET. Let's clear this up so we have more space. I'm going to put dot .NET, EF, migrations. Add, I'm going to say fix table name. We're going to create the migration. And you can see here I have a folder now called migration. And this is all of the SQL script that's going to be executed against my database. Automatically generated by efcore.net ef database update and now we can see everything has run successfully so if i open back my app db context sql viewer and we can see first of all that i have a new version of my migration that has been automatically added which is, has the same name that i added and my user now table has the right fix okay perfect so now we these two is basically how we can actually add a database for both node.js and .NET. we can see .NET require a lot more infrastructure work in order for us to get there we need to create the table structure first then we need to create a db context then we need to 
into it, inject it. So we can see there's a different approach where on one hand side, we're actually utilizing row SQL in order for us to do this with a default pattern to connect to it. On the left hand side, we're having a bit more work in order for us to utilize all of the middlewares in order for us to do this. So now that we understand how these both connect to a database, now let's actually see them in action and by actually attaching them to a endpoint on our O application. So I'm gonna go back here. Now I don't need any the db.js anymore. So I'm just gonna add my stuff into my uh, into my app.js and let's start here first. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to have the same command here, which has allowed me to connect to my database. So I'm just gonna copy this and put it inside my app db, my app.js, sorry. So I'm just gonna add this here. And now I'm gonna utilize the same logic, basically referring to SQLite and connecting to my users table. Okay, great. So now that I have this, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna put app.post and this is gonna be users forward slash users and it's gonna take the same structure of request response and then from here I need to this needs to be a bigger than and then what I do here is I'm gonna take everything that's coming from the body but before that I'm gonna put a try catch so in case something goes wrong I can gracefully handle the error and first of all I'm gonna say return res.json I'm gonna return res.status which is gonna be 500.json and then here it's gonna be success false so in case something goes wrong that's what I want to do I'm gonna return a 500 and if it's successful I'm gonna say false else what I want to do is I'm gonna get stuff from my request body so I'm gonna put const first name last name and email it's gonna be equal request dot body so now that I have these the next step let's make this a bit bigger so we can see it the next step is i'm gonna basically create my sql query so i'm gonna put var sql equal and here it's gonna be answered let's make it all capital it's gonna be answered into users first name last name and email i'm gonna specify the values and i'm just gonna put a question mark question mark and a question mark and this will be automatically updated on the fly when i'm actually running the sql so now what i want to do is i'm directly run the sql so i'm gonna put db which I had defined here, db.run, and I'm gonna specify the SQL. Then what I wanna do is I'm gonna specify my parameters, which is gonna be first name, last name, and email. And then I'm gonna say, if there is any error, I'm gonna handle it. If not, we're gonna be returning the right response. So then once I have done this, I'm gonna say, if error, I'm just gonna return the same thing. So I'm gonna copy this. Else, I'm gonna say console log user added, just so I can know from here. And then finally, I'm just gonna update this to return a 201 and then I'm gonna put success equal to true and that should be it. So what I'm doing here is basically I'm creating a try catch. I'm capturing first of all my request body and then basically I'm creating the query. Once I created the query, I'm actually opening the connection to my database, executing the query. And then if there's any error, I'm actually able to capture that error. And then I'm just making sure to console it to the log so I can see it. And then basically I'm returning back to the user at 201. So let's open this and let's run. So I'm gonna put node app.js. Now we can see it's running. I'm gonna go to postman. And again, this is gonna be running on port 3000. So I'm just gonna update this to users. As we can see here, this is the endpoint, so users. And I'm gonna update the body. So I'm gonna put first name, last name, and email. So once I have that, I'm just gonna click on send. And we can see here, I got a 201 with a success. And if I come here, we can see user added. If I go to to my SQLite database, I open it up. We can see here inside my database, I have my first name, last name, but I think I have a problem. And because here I have a typo, so let's fix this typo. I'm gonna stop my application first and let me fix. So it's gonna be first name like this. Okay, now let's run this. So again, let's clear this up and node app.js. Now it's running. I'm just gonna go back to Postman. I'm gonna put Muhammad one, the one, one and, and one here. Send another 201. Let's open our database now. And now we can see that my actual information is being passed. Okay, great. So basically, once I have connected to a database, it's pretty straightforward of how I can actually utilize it by basically always relying on my single DB connection that I have created here and basically creating my SQL command and then injecting get an order for it to run which is pretty straightforward so now let's see how we can actually use this inside my .NET application and it's also going to be pretty straightforward so i'm just going to create a new endpoint i'm going to put app app.map post forward slash users then it's going to be async i'm going to utilize here my api db contact db and i'm going to take my user as a parameter i'm going to put user and then i'm going to be saying here a try catch so try catch exception oops exception ex and i'm going to say Return result dot 
bad request and I'm gonna pass the error that has happened. So let's just build this. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, so we're gonna put dot not build. We got two errors. I had a feeling. Let's see what are these errors. I think the first error here is I have this needs to be a capital M. So let's run this again. Actually, I saw dot not build so we can see exactly if there's any other error. And we can see that this does not return anything in case it's successful. So I'm just gonna put return results dot okay just to make sure it's building and dot not build. We can see it's building. Okay, so now that I know it's actually building, now let's see how we can actually add stuff to my database. So what I want to do is I'm gonna take my DB contacts. So I'm just gonna put DB dot users dot add and I'm gonna add my user I just passed. Then I'm gonna put db dot save changes async and I'll make sure this is gonna be an await and that should be it. So now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna put dot not build again. Perfect, dot not run. Now I can see my application is running on port 5178. So I'm gonna copy this, go back to postman. I'm gonna update this just to make it easier for myself and I'm gonna click on post and now we should be receiving a 200. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna change this to created. I'm just gonna go back here, check my app.db. So now as we can see here, both of them appear. So what I wanna do right now is I'm just gonna do a quick comparison between the two. Let me close this. So first of all, if we go all the way up, the way we initialized both of them within SQLite, we just refer to the database and we utilize one single connection. On the other hand, within .NET, what we did is we relied on the middleware of that pub API to create the connection. So we actually relied on the .NET framework to manage the connection rather than us have to utilize this. Then what we have done here is in order for us to utilize that data database connection through API DB contacts. What we have done is we have injected the API DB contacts and then we refer to it as database. And it's a much more strongly typed approach rather than on the node side where we actually had to create a SQL query where we actually try to inject this value inside this query. So on the node side, we can see that this could be more vulnerable to a SQL injection attack and more security attack. But again, there's more ways to sanitize it. I'm just speaking out of the box implementation. And we can see here that the way we're actually handling this with when inside the controllers from node we can see we have a bit more code that we need to write in order for us to manage this on the left on the other side when it comes to the post within the dot uh, streamlined few lines of code so users dot add await save and then that's it we are actually able to return so now this is how easy it is to create in both we can see both of them have different benefits we can see the node application is much more straightforward to utilize but the dot net one is much more strongly typed so there's less chances of us doing any types of error inside our code it all depends on what type of scenario that you want to utilize and what type of technologies. All of the different sanitation that we need uh, in order for us to protect our own application can be created, but that's going to be additional work. On the other hand, our .NET application required much more infrastructure or setting up to do before we can actually utilize it. So there's always this benefits between the two. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. It will really help the channel. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon and buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.